My name is Joy Erickson, and I was born in 1934 in Greeley, Colorado. Approximately a month later, my maternal grandmother passed away. Shortly after that, my mother, my grandfather, and I moved to Sydney, Montana. And that's where I spent the rest of my childhood, was in Sydney. And Sydney is in the northeast corner of Montana, close to North Dakota and Canada. Very cold country. I went to school there. As a small child, um, frequently I was reminded that I had my name was Joy, and that they kept saying, Joy, J is for Jesus, O is for others, and Y is for yourself. And as a child in kid, Sunday school, I always, every Christmas, I had to say that little piece. J is for Jesus, O is for others, and Y is for yourself. So I've kept thinking of that many, many years. When I was about three years old, we lived in the country. And because I thought it was fun, I went to school with my cousins. I was too young to go to school, but I went to school and they let me. And I learned to read and I do, did all the things that school children do. Well, later we moved into town, which was a whole two miles. Moved into town when I was in the first grade. And that put me way ahead of the kids in the class. And so all of a sudden I was named the teacher's pet and I got to do all the narrating for Christmas programs and all that fun stuff. This was in the first grade. Then we went on into a junior high and I was a very good student because I had learned to read before I went to school. And so all my school years, I really was ahead of the rest of the kids in my class, which was very helpful to me maintaining a good grade average. I was in high school, I learned, to, I played in the band. I played saxophone in the band, and that was one of the most fun things I had all my childhood. Uh, we got to go on lots of band trips and do all the fun things that band kids do. I graduated in 1952. This, at this particular time, I had started dating, and Wayne and I started going together, and we were engaged at the same time as I graduated from high school. Now, I graduated valedictorian in my class, so I was offered scholarships to several different places. But the scholarship I chose was a full tuition, full everything scholarship to St. Patrick's School of Nursing in Missoula, Montana. So I went to nurses training and Wayne continued working for geophysical service. And we occasionally were able to see each other, but not too often because the school was very strict. We weren't allowed many privileges. And in the evening we had to study and we worked 12 hours a day and we went to school as well. This was a good thing, but one of the things that we had to do, it was a Catholic school, but every morning at six o'clock in the morning, we had to be downstairs for morning prayer. And this happened every morning whether you were working or whether you had just got off, you had to be at morning prayer in full uniform. One of the things that I learned there was the Apostles' Creed, which as soon as we got out of school, I continued to know the Apostles' Creed. Well, nurses' training continued and Wayne and I got to see each other occasionally. I graduated in 1955 and we immediately got married. We were married in Sydney in the Congregational Church. My mother was not, and my dad did not go to the same church. My dad was a Lutheran, but my mother went to the Congregational Church. So we were married in the Congregational Church, but I promised Wayne that I would someday be a Lutheran because most of my relatives were Lutheran because we were living in a Scandinavian t town and this, they all were Danish. We went, our first home was in Browning, Montana. We went to Canada, of course, on our honeymoon. We went to Calgary, Lake Louise, uh, Banff. It was a great honeymoon. On our way home, we went to the west side of the uh, divide and went down through Kalispell and we bought our house trailer in Kalispell. And our first residence was in Browning, Montana, which was an Indian reservation. And I worked in the hospital in Browning, which was an Indian hospital. And believe me, that was a real test 
of reality after coming out of a very uh, cloistered, quiet, everything by the rules hospital in a Catholic society, went to this Indian hospital where it was really reality. Well, we worked there for a couple months and then Wayne was transferred. Our first transfer was from Browning, Montana to Falfurious, Texas, which was about 2,400 miles. Starting at that time when we moved, Wayne would pull the tra uh, our trailer with a company truck and I drove. And that's what we did going to Falfurious, Texas. When we got to Falfurious, Texas, the work that they were supposed to do was on the King Ranch and they never got their uh, permits cleared. So really, we stayed in Falfurious, Texas for about a month, and he never had to work. So we went to Mexico, and we did all the things we could do in South Texas, because neither of us had ever been in Texas. When we left Montana, it was freezing cold, and we were in Falfurious on Thanksgiving, and we went swimming, and I thought, this is the greatest place in the whole world. Well, it might have been a great place, but we only stayed there about a month. We immediately then went from Falfurious, Texas to Oklahoma. And we stayed in Oklahoma for, oh, a few months. After that, we were transferred to Pennsylvania. We lived in Pennsylvania for a period of time and I worked while we were in Pennsylvania, which was fun. It was interesting. I really wasn't fond of Pennsylvania, but we stayed there and it was a new environment for us. We learned to eat spaghetti and we learned to eat pizza. Never had that kind of thing in Montana. We also went to all the different places that we could go to to visit and learn about our area. While we were there in about, well, I don't remember exactly when, but my mother called one day and my mother said, I just wanted you to know that your dad and I are celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary, and I was 27 years old. So this didn't quite add up, did it? Well, at that time, I, I really didn't think too much about it. I thought, well, okay. But I never asked any questions. I just went on with my life, just as like everybody did that. So then we continued moving. In seven years, we lived in 27 places and we moved from Pennsylvania uh, to Mississippi in Arkansas, back to Texas, back to Mississippi, back to Texas. Some of these places I worked and some of these places I didn't work. We always went to church every place we went, but we were never really in one place long enough for me to, prom to become the Lutheran that I had promised Wayne that I would be. So anyway, we were in Mississippi, finally we're in Mississippi and we were about to have our first child. And we were in, there was a Lutheran church and this was in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And the pastor was very helpful and came out and I was um, made a Lutheran. I finished my training and I became a Lutheran in Hattiesburg in 1959. And Jeff was born on New Year's Eve in 1959. Shortly after that, we moved to Texas and we bought a bigger trailer because we were now going to have another baby. And Scott then was born in Sulphur Springs, Texas. He's always been very proud of the fact that he is a real, real Texan. Well, when we were six, when he was six months old, we moved to Dallas. And when we moved to Dallas, one of the first things we did was find a church and we went to Holy Cross. Holy Cross was a great place. We had good, we found good friends and we just were happy, happy to be in one Lutheran church and we learned to know so many people and it was just a f good place to be. Well, at that particular time, there was a group of people from Carrollton that was wanting to start a Lutheran church in Carrollton and they asked us to join them. At first we said, no, I, do, I said, no, I don't want to do that. I, I'm happy here at Holy Cross, we're going to stay here. Well, of course, these friends kept on us and on us, and finally we said, okay, we'll join this group that's going to find a church in Carrollton. So we did, and they were our best friends. 
So we started a group of people that started looking into building a church in Carrollton. Well, we had lots and lots of meetings, finally called a pastor. Finally, we got the church started. And on November 27th, 1966, Prince of Peace was born and we were charter members. So this was the beginning of a wonderful relationship. The best thing that ever happened to either one of us was becoming members of Prince of Peace. And it has been the where our family, our family has been Prince of Peace because we had no family in Texas at all. So these people were very, very special to us. We did a lot of different things. Wayne and I traveled a lot. Of course, we were from Montana. We went to Montana at least once a year, sometimes even more, as long as my parents and Wayne's parents were living. We traveled as much as we could. Jeff was the most carsick child that you ever, ever could be around. And he said traveling was torture to him. Scott loved every minute of it. But we still went to Montana every year and we went, traveled, and did other things. Well, when Scott was in the second grade, the doctor that we were going to begged me to go to work. He said, we need nurses really, really bad. And so I decided, okay, I'll go to work. Scott was in the second grade. And of course, as a nurse, when you go to work someplace, the first thing you do is you have to work nights. Well, nights worked well for us because I could sleep in the daytime when the boys were at school. And then when they went to school in the morning, I went to bed. That worked well for a period of time. I worked nights for one year. And then later I was, uh, promoted to assistant head nurse in open in cardiovascular surgery, which basically was open hearts. And I, we did all the vascular surgery, but open heart was the main thing that we did. And it was my very, very favorite specialty. I worked there for a long time. Well, in about 1973, we had a doctor come visit us from Iran and he spent a couple months working in our operating room. And then one day he said, Joy, I would like to have you go to Iran. We're going to open a, a new hospital in Tehran and I would like you to come and set up the operating room. Well, I thought, no, I can't do that. But we negotiated and we talked and we talked. And finally, he wanted me to go for two years. And finally, I agreed that I would go for two months. The hospital agreed I could have a leave of absence for that period of time, and I would go to Iran and set up this heart hospital. But in order to go to Iran, I had to have a passport. So I started the process of getting a passport. Well, I couldn't get a passport because in order to get a passport, you have to have a birth certificate. And I didn't have a birth certificate. My name was Joy Lee Peterson. I tried to get a birth certificate. They said, there was no such person as Joy Lee Peterson. So I called my mother and I said, Mom, what's going on here? I can't get a passport because I can't get a birth certificate. And she said, oh, Joy, I just did, never did tell you that uh, I was married before I married and divorced, before I married your dad, the man that I lived with all my life and thought was my dad. He really wasn't my father, but he, I grew up and I thought of him as my father, the only father that I ever really knew. So anyway, to make everything good, at this time, I'm 38 years old, and my dad said he would adopt me. So I went to Montana, Scott was about 10 at that time, and I, Scott and I went to Montana, and I was legally adopted so that I could get a birth certificate. So at 38 years old, I got my first birth certificate that said I was Joy Lee Peterson, which made me a legal nurse now, because here I was a nurse and didn't even have a legal name, so I couldn't, I wasn't legal. But I, I got my birth certificate, I got the passport, I got all the papers ready to go to Iran, and about that time, there was a huge plane hijacked in the Arab countries over there. And I decided, uh, I don't want to go to Iran. I don't want to go where there are hijacking airplanes. And I backed out. Now, I have to say they weren't very happy with me in Iran 
but I didn't go. But I continued my life here in the United States. Work, I worked, and then in 1982, I was promoted to the director of surgery instead of working in open hearts. That was a real promotion and I had a lot of advantages because of that. I got to travel a lot. Uh, I traveled, I, I was on a couple advisory committees for products throughout the United States. One of them met routinely in Jacksonville, Florida, so I got to go to Florida regularly. One of them met routinely in Salt Lake City, so I got to go to Salt Lake City routinely. And then besides that, the Daughters of Charity uh, its headquarters was in St. Louis, so I went to St. Louis on a periodic basis. In, a, in addition to this travel, Wayne and I still were doing our traveling. Well, I worked that way for Oh, many years. Finally, then in 1997, I decided it was time for me to retire. And I did. I retired. Immediately after that, we went to Australia, New Zealand. We did all the things that tourists do over there. Frankfurt, in about 2000, Rhonda gave me a DNA test. She thought that that might help me find out who my re something about my real father. So I did the DNA, the DNA test, and I re later received a report that I had multiple national backgrounds. And then in 2002, the internet started to be a very important thing in people's lives. And of course, I, by this time, I knew the, my father's name. And so I looked it up on, I was curious, uh, I looked it up and I found uh, his birth time, I found his birth, his death date, and I found that he had remarried and had two daughters. And I try, I, it gave the internet gave their name and their addresses, and I tried to call them, but I never did get an answer. So I just took the information on the internet, copy, filed it away, stuck it in my file, and never thought too much about it. Well, then in 2016, one day, August 9th, the phone rang. And it was early in the morning and I was in the shower. Wayne answered the phone and they asked for if there was a Joy Lee Erickson that lived there. And Wayne said, yes. And he called me and he said, hey, there's somebody on the phone that wants to talk to you. And I said, no, I don't want to talk to him, I'm busy. And he said, I think you better take this call. So I did. I took the telephone call and, it, and the lady says, Joy, I think I'm your sister. And I said, what? And she said, yes, I, I think I'm your sister. She said, I have had a geologist look for you and, you and he found you. And she started telling me names and all of a sudden I remembered that file that I had put in my file. And I went to get it, and everything she told me was exactly what I had written down. So I knew it was really the truth. So I said, uh, when could we meet? And she says, I'm anxious to meet you. She said, I've been looking for you for years. She said, our father talked of you many times. He knew he had a daughter, Joy, and he wanted to find you, but he never did. did. He never found me. We got together, her name was Mary, and that fall she and her husband came to Carrollton and visited with us, and we had a wonderful time. Then later, the next year, Scott and Sandy and I went to California to visit them, and since that time, we've had a very growing relationship, and I just feel very privileged to think that I was able to find relatives, uh, even though I was by this time in my 80s. We were CareCycle leaders. We first became a CareCycle leader when Pastor Hainer was uh, here at Prince of Peace, and we called them share groups in those days. We, this, we were still on the Beltline facility. We, and then after we moved to, Pastor Wagner was here, and we changed the name of share groups to CareCycle groups. And I still was a CareCycle leader. And of course, at that time, I thought, about being a CareCycle leader for a year or two. Well, that's been like 50 years ago and I'm still a CareCycle leader. 
but being a care cycle leader has been one of my one of the best things that I ever ever did. Um, it has the people that have been in my care cycle group are family to us, are very very good friends. I would and now the care cycle group has been together for a long time and we've got a lot of different people and a lot of people have come and gone and they still remain our very good friends. Today at this time, the Care Disciple group basically takes care of each other because we're all older now and we've had a lot of sickness, which in 2021, Wayne passed away. And this of course has been the biggest challenge that I have ever faced and the most that I ever needed the help of my church people and my friends, and they all were wonderful to me. Um, God has blessed me in so many ways, and these care disciple people are the blessings of all. And so after all of these things, I decided it really isn't who you are, it's whose you are that makes the difference. Thanks for listening. This is my story.